Hey, hi, Steve. Um, thanks for taking the call today. Um, uh, uh, just for the, you know those watching this, um, we obviously work very closely together in terms of uh, our engagement with uh, with teams and, and getting the maximum amount of teams. Um, Steve. Okay. Uh, hey, Steve. Um, really, uh, thanks very much for for joining me on the call this afternoon. Um, I'd just like to kick off. Really, uh, we work closely together in terms of the the field of employee engagement and how we get the best out of um, teams in businesses and large organisations. Um, just uh, give uh, the audience a bit of an introduction as to who you are and um, and why we work together. I guess. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. It's uh, it's always great to be working with you, and uh, and thank you for setting this up today. And. Uh, so yeah, for those that don't know, uh, my name's Steve Middleton. I am the Senior Business Engagement Manager here at Engagement Multiplier. Uh, we're a technology business uh, and we work um, with successful business owners all over the world that understand the, the power and impact of having uh, an engaged workforce. Uh, uh, and our technology provides a, a very simple structure, a repeatable structure and framework uh, for companies to, to thrive and, uh, and grow. Fantastic. So. Um, here's the million pound question. Um, mm -hmm. I guess what's uh, what's the response been in terms of you know for for engagement multiplier when uh, coronavirus hit? How, how have you how have you responded? Well, it's quite interesting, Steve, because clearly, um, like a lot of businesses, um, uh, it hit us really quickly. Um, uh, all of a sudden, uh, you know, businesses we knew it changed, and um, uh, and and what we know, um, again, um, what we know with, with a lot of organisations and business leaders is, uh, we like others had to pivot very quickly and understand well where can we be of uh, of most value. Now, um, the one thing we have in our favour, Steve, is that we're, we're well funded and we've got thousands of clients all over the world uh, working um, with us and, and using our platform. We moved efforts to. Um, uh, and we were completely focused on being um, extraordinarily helpful and useful. Um, and we wanted to understand where we could be of most value. So one of the first things we did, Steve, before we reacted and did anything at all, is that um, we went out to our clients um, and we actually spoke to several hundred clients. Um, uh, and, and we first of all asked them, you know, how are they? Um, uh, and remember, this was right at the outbreak of uh, coronavirus. So nobody knew what this new normal was all about or how long it was going to stick around for. And, and in fact, we're still in the middle of it today. So, um, uh, but we also found out, well, what challenges are they experiencing right now? And um, clearly what, what um, solutions have they put in place and really where could our technology be of most value? Uh, and what was quite interesting, um, Steve, first of all, is that we learned that employee engagement was not the top priority at all. Um, uh, it was um, business owners were more interested about how we navigate through this challenging time. And what we also found is that they didn't have time to think about it. They just wanted answers. So yeah, so the first thing that we, 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 um, we knew instantly because of the amount, I mean, we spoke to several hundred clients. Um, we quickly understood where those challenges were. We went about creating a solution uh, or solutions where we could to see it, to, to help um, rectify some of those and be part of that solution focus really. And that solution has actually led to uh, a, a completely, uh, I guess, um, not revised necessarily, but a, a, a survey that does take into account the, the virtual worker, it does take into account the, the, the feelings and needs and indeed the, the level of engagement. So um, I know that we, we've chatted about this. So you set that survey uh, uh, out uh, into the, uh, um, the business ether. Um, how's it been received by the virtual workers, by you know people who are now finding themselves having to work under social distancing? Um, they're working in isolation. Some people I know are actually isolated in terms of they're living, working from home, but their home is them. They're alone. How's it been yeah. received? What, what's what's been the impact as well on that? Well, um, Steve, I, I have to tell you, it's been it's been amazing. So just to connect everyone on the audience today of what we've actually created. Um, uh, this is a completely free capability. You don't have to be a client of Engagement Multiplier to take advantage of this. And in fact, if there's one thing that I could urge any of you out there to do, if you have um, uh, employees working from home, is, is please take this survey. Um, and the survey is designed to help you understand as business owners and leaders what adjustments you need to make right now um, to enable your teams to thrive in this new normal. Because uh, Steve, as you say, um, uh, you know, many of us, um, me included, have been forced to work from home. Uh, some are thriving in that environment, um, 
Uh, some are finding it very diff difficult. Um, uh, many are, are incredibly busy. Um, some are struggling to get out of bed in the morning and do a day's productive work because they've not got the stimulate that you'll get from being in a workforce or that structure or that framework. Uh, so one thing that you will find out as a result of the survey is uh, what that looks like for you and your team. Um, uh, it'll give you the critical data you need to understand uh, how you're performing in this environment and what changes you can make and particularly around how you communicate to your employees um, and what they need uh, from you and what support they need from you um, to enable them to do um, a productive um, day's work and to remain sane uh, and, and human through this through this process. Uh, and the reaction, uh, Steve, is just, I can't tell you, I mean, I've delivered um, six or seven reports this morning before our conversation to clients um, just helping them through the data and every single one is different uh, and it's um, there's just this this innovation that's coming through because um, one thing that we've always stressed at Engage Multiply it's not about you or I Steve coming up with the answers we're there as facilitators but the best ideas come from those inside the business nobody knows your businesses more than your team so this extracts and unlocks that hidden potential from within very very quickly uh, again confidentially anonymously that's really important uh, because it, um, it's how you get the truth. Uh, and we've just seen some amazing things happen. And this is the exciting bit uh, for me, because when we return from this, this is all about emerging stronger. Uh, and uh, you're going to want to capture those ideas to make sure that they continue way beyond COVID-19. Yeah, so, so uh, I think a really valuable and interesting point you raised there with regards to coming out at the back end of this stronger than when you went in. It's been a I guess a theme and one of the key questions I've been asking all the way through. And it's interesting at the beginning, you know, um, I, I saw the same as you, you know, when this first started, there was, there was almost a, an air of panic, um, you know, what to do, uh, lots of knee jerk decisions that were made. Um, and, uh, you know, suddenly we're furloughing our teams. Then we need to start thinking about bringing them back into the fold. And then there's the, okay, so how do we communicate in this, in this context? How's the, uh, I guess, how are the business owners themselves taken to the fact that actually, we, you know, we've now got the ability to give them a very solid conduit that really does impact and can give them some, you know, some very, very uh, um, impactful and useful information in terms of how the team are faring. Because the, I think that, you know, for the workers, the alone and the isolation and the fear that, you know, a lot of people might be struggling with is one of the really key factors, isn't it? Yeah, no, and, and look, let's just... Um, pedal backwards a little bit because um, first of all for anyone who thinks they've got the answers um, let's all remember that uh, as far as I'm aware nobody on this planet has been through this before no. um, uh, so we're, we're all learning um, as we're going through this together uh, this is more about sharing um, you know best practices amongst the wider community because and that was why we did what we did in the first instance to find out well what are where are those challenges and what are people doing and uh, I can only talk for ourselves because we took on board many of those ideas and concepts. Uh, we've tested, learned and refined those. And um, look, as a business, we've had three or four of the most productive weeks we've ever had in our history. Um, we've had the two most successful weeks in our history in terms of new clients interacting with us as a business. So, and, and if you'd asked me that three, four weeks ago, I'd have told you you're bonkers because we were going into lockdown. Um, but the, the other thing is, just want to connect everyone to the opportunity here. Uh, and this isn't just an opportunity for, that. I mean, this is what we're focused on at Engage Multiple Spice. It's an opportunity for everybody. Um, and there's three things. Number one, I, this is an opportunity to build a tighter culture, um, a team that come together. Uh, we've seen this with ideas of innovation and, um, and, and think about different ways of, of working as, as a collective and actually looking at the world very differently to where we did um, only three, four weeks ago. Um, the second thing is, um, uh, and, and for those that are thinking and, uh, and acting in the, in, in the right way, um, it's about coming out of this emerging stronger. Um, and it's something that we're deeply connected to because um, you know, it, sometimes it takes a bit of a shake up like this to realize what you have um, and where the value points are within a business. Um, so again, this gives you that opportunity to evaluate that. And, and for those of you that are doing business right now, in, you know, it's like whenever there's a recession or a difficult time, those that, that build businesses and thrive in recessions or find new ways of doing business are those that typically thrive, and I mean really thrive afterwards. And, and that leads me on to point number three. Um, it's, it, 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 
And there's a real opportunity to transform the way that we all do business forever. Uh, we've set a target in our business that we want to find at least three ways where we can add additional value, not about revenue, but additional value um, uh, to the clients and, uh, and those that we serve. So, um, and that's an opportunity for everybody, uh, regardless of what you do, what industry you're in. Um, they just yeah. give us point number three again. We've got the jitters on that one slightly. Okay, yeah. So, so the third point um, is uh, we all have an opportunity to um, transform the way we're doing business uh, forever. Um, uh, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, what walk of life, but um, again, thinking about the value that you're delivering, um, thinking about the way you go about business, those that you serve. Uh, you know, us personally as a business, we've got a target and we've told ourselves to get at least three new ways uh, of which to deliver um, value to, to our clients. And it doesn't mean just, you know, additional revenue streams, but additional value add propositions that we can deliver to those, again, those that we serve, the clients that we work with. Definitely, definitely. So uh, the interesting point is you, you already used the phrase, you know, that, that, that almost as virtual as the new norm. And um, it, I think lots of people are thinking about that now. And, the, you know, the government are being pressed at the moment in terms of what's the, the return to work plan going to look like or what is it going to be? Um, and uh, people are now starting to think, well, actually, what is the new norm? What does that look like? So, you know, what, what, what are you seeing? What are you hearing from, uh, you know, I guess the vast amount of, of surveys that have been conducted and the conversations you're having yeah um and the answer steve it's very difficult because um again i don't think anybody knows what this new normal is going to be um uh, at all and i think it'll be even though we have a huge amount of data we can only talk about what's happening here and now um uh, and we, you know we, people are talking about the return uh, um uh, i i think you know we could be talking about that for 12 months it's not just about removing the barrier around when we can stop social distancing or um, we start to send children back to school or reopening shops and pubs. Um, I think people are going to feel uneasy about that process for a long time um, because we've been told and educated that stay away from people. Um, uh, you know, human condition is that uh, after 21 days it becomes a habit. Well, we've been in lockdown for over 21 days. The habit is to stay away from people. Um, so yeah, so I think, I think that the, the returning to work, what that new normal looks like, we're going to have to find that out as it happens. Um, some businesses will find that very difficult um, and it'll be about survival. Um, uh, for others, it's just finding new ways of, uh, of doing business through that time. Mm. Uh, and um, again, going back to those three opportunities, it's, it's you know, those that have the tightest cultures, those that are looking at the world differently, those that use this as an opportunity to transform the way they're doing business and, uh, and see ways to emerge strong from this are those that will ultimately thrive. Um, uh, I think there's you know, a, a couple of interesting points to come out of that one. I mean, firstly, um, you know, when we look at culture, you know, the point on that is if we, if we embrace culture now, you know, that, that is going to lead to a high level of performance, a high level of uh, focus towards success. And the reality is that success and performance can't come before culture uh, and, and in the context have a, a long and meaningful impact on a business. So you've got, to, you've got to focus on that. I think the other one as well, in terms of the you know, virtual being this new north, I guess some of the areas that I have seen is I think meetings are becoming a little bit more productive. Um, you can't talk over each other on, on a Zoom. So there's a little bit more restraint being shown. Uh, otherwise, they become meaningless. Um, I do think travel and subsistence for businesses is going to be kind of an interesting uh, context. The, the other side of this, I've got a, a number of clients that would spend an awful lot of time on the road. They've realized that they no longer need to do that. And some of the interpersonal aspects of, of doing business with people can effectively and efficiently be done in this means. And then also there's the, you know, the, 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 the working from home environment. And actually what's interesting there is the fact that you, you're also seeing a higher level of productivity from people. But there's a balance there in terms of making sure that people are being productive. And I think when people come back to you know, the, the, the office, as we start to you know, go back to whatever the new norm is going to be, um, I think the business owners will be in a place where they're going to be able to, to, you know, to determine that actually, you know what, certain people here um, were more productive when they were working from home. I wonder how we can you know, then impact on that. Well, just, just something to add on a couple of points you mentioned there, Steve, because, um, and let's first of all, just, just rewind a bit to rather than looking um, to the return to work piece and what will the world look like, let's look at the here and now and the journey that employees have been on. So, um, you know, they've been 
classroom. And I think there was, there was an air of scepticism, but also excitement. Uh, but now we're in that position being, what, five, six weeks into it for some people, um, got the where that again there, mate. energy and excitement is now... Okay, Sorry. right, just, uh, just let me know. The jitters again. Uh, and this is a virtual interview, so we're going to have to work through some of these. So just, just go back and, uh, uh, you know, uh, give us that what people have been through. And, uh... Yeah, of course. Um, so, so, yeah, just, um, are we okay now in terms of jitters, Steve? We're, we're doing all right. I'll let you know if it goes again, and we'll just have to roll with it. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's virtual fine. is the new norm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, no, I was just saying, so in terms of the, the journey that employees are on, well, um, you know, somewhere, some of us now are five or six weeks into lockdown. Um, and for those of you that are watching this on repeat, it could be seven, eight, 10, 12 weeks into lockdown. So um, that whole, uh, I think there's another air of skepticism and excitement when we went in for employees because they were forced to work from home. Um, but now, um, are we jittering? We're we back. Okay. We're doing okay. Okay, but now... Um, you know, fatigue is starting to kick in and we're seeing this a lot. So the operational side of people from working from home is, is working, but it's that lack of structure and framework. It's the lack of that. Um, we talked about, you talked about Zoom meetings or virtual meetings um, just now, Steve, and um, a couple of things that we've noticed on those is one, yeah, they are becoming more productive. Uh, people are turning up on time as well, which has been a major win. Um, but that human piece is being lost. Whereas where the first, when you walk into an office or into a meeting, the first thing you talk about isn't normally the agenda or um, it's normally, you know, how's your evening, your weekend, or they're going to sit around the coffee machine or whatever. So keeping that human side of it as well is a real challenge. Um, so it's when one of the, th some of the feedbacks coming through from the surveys we've carried out, it's not just about communication, which businesses are doing very, very well on the whole. It's more about keeping that human communication um, uh, and, and those breakout sessions, the cups of coffees, the teas, uh, beginnings of meetings. And we, and the other thing that, that um, again, I can share with your listeners, we won't do this today, it's a different topic, but we've created the format of having EPIC meetings. Uh, EPIC stands for uh, energy, purpose, insight, and culture. So, um, and it's a structure that works really, really well for us because at the beginning of every meeting, we start it with what we call a positive focus. Everybody around the table or on the Zoom or on the, 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 the virtual meeting gives one positive focus. It doesn't have to be work, it's just about themselves or um, something personal. And, and the, the point there, Steve, is that it gives everybody an opportunity to contribute, number one. Uh, and two, it relaxes people. It's, it's, it's human interaction. It gets you into their lives. It's, it's, it's a conversation that you wouldn't have. Uh, and then you go into the agenda. Um, but the agenda shouldn't just be a, a set of points that you're going to cover. Um, it's about having purpose to that agenda. Mm. What are we looking to achieve from today's meeting? And if you set that out ahead of time, it turns a two-hour meeting into 15 minutes which is far more energetic, far more meaningful, because you get straight to the point. You all are, everybody in the room is connected to what it is you're looking to achieve. It's really uh, and so, so again, won't go through the whole conversation. No, but, it's um, really, really definitely something it's that, in two frames. One, because it's, it's something that we, we focus on and um, actually put in structure, not only into the, you know, the, the business fundamentals and the business function, but also as having to take into account the, you know, the social interaction, you know, on a couple of occasions there. So, you know, I know I've got clients that now have virtual brunch. They'll have their virtual tea breaks, um, you know, encouraging their, their people to, you know, that, that to, to have taken their favorite mug from, the, from work to, to have a mug on the desk that they can associate with their workplace. You know, there's a, um, it, and just, just give everybody what EPIC stands again, because they, they will have all grabbed their notebooks and they'll be rewinding to, to work out what that stands for. Just tell us again. Okay, so um, the E is for energy. The P is for purpose. The I is for insight, which again is something you capture at the end of every meeting from everybody. Uh, what's their one insight from the meeting? Uh, and then the C is for culture. So driving that culture in the business. Well, we, we do um, a, a similar. So I encourage all of my clients, whenever they do a meeting, is to do around the table, to do a whiffle. Do you know what whiffle stands for? No, no, no. So the whiffle is what I feel like expressing. And that's been <laughs> incredibly powerful. Yeah. So in fact, actually, um, you know, I do a, a morning kickstart with all of my clients. So everyone jumps onto 
seven thirty actually, which is really interesting because they're, they're they're still getting up early and having some routine. So at seven thirty, we jump onto a, a, a you know a, a Zoom call, a Zoom meeting, and, and we do a whiffle. What yeah. I feel like expressing, and, and it helps. Um, I've got uh, you know a couple of clients now that are doing a Tuesday. So, you know, they encourage their team on a Tuesday to choose what it is that they can work on that's going to, you know, add positive energy or, you know, really good. A positive result. Uh, and this is a great one that one of my clients came up with and I've shared with others who have now also started is um, Friday Day. Right, okay. It's fabulous. You know, so on a Friday, they, they encourage the team to bring ideas of, of you know, what we can do to, to go forward. And, um, and just, I, th I think this, I think that's, the exciting outcome of this, the output of um, COVID-19, is this feeling of innovation um, and feeling part of, of the team. Uh, you know, because businesses have worked so hard to make this possible, uh, employees are now feeling far energized um, uh, than, than ever before uh, to articulate those ideas that they probably once would have locked away in a cupboard and felt never had the confidence or the ability to share. So this is a in terms of outcomes from this, positive outcomes, that's a huge one, uh, oh, yeah. absolutely huge one. Just one other thing as well that I want to share with you, something that I do. Um, uh, we know that, um, oh, are we jittering? No, you're good. You, you, you're okay, but, get the audio so we can still roll with that. Okay, so one of the other things that, that, that I do uh, and that we all do in our business, because we're all forced now to have so much more screen time like we're doing now, um, it can be straining on the eyes. It can actually make you very tired. Um, it's like looking at, you know, nobody would in their right mind look at an iPad for, for nine, 10 hours straight, which is basically what we're doing in front of our laptops and screens. So we do 55 minute sprints. So I have a, a clock next to me with 55 minutes sets on it and, and the alarm goes off. I stop work, close the laptop and I'll go and make a cup of coffee, um, go and see the family, walk around the garden for five minutes, come back and go again. And it makes you so much more productive um, than just plowing on. Um, uh, hour after. And again, what a what a what a fantastic share. The only thing I'd say is when when you're having the coffee breaks, don't go mad on caffeine. Do the decaf. Yeah. <laughs> so um, look, Steve, this has been incredibly useful this afternoon. Uh, and the purpose behind it, you know, is, is somebody who works with teams to to increase engagement and some of the stuff that we're doing, even you know, in this circumstance right now. Um, you know, I want to encourage people to to actually take a real interest in their teams, and and I know already you know that the survey is is a, an incredibly simple effective um way to do it so just just give us a, a, a i guess a final final uh, piece just in terms of you know encouraging people to jump on and take this survey look um anybody who has a team working from home um uh, you have a responsibility to um, uh, to look after them uh, and to, to, to care for them. But also as a business owner, you're going to want them to remain productive. Okay. So the best way to do that, because uh, I'm sure you're all doing a fabulous job of communicating to them on a tannoy. Um, let's get their feedback. Let's understand what adjustments can you make to enable them to thrive? Where can you be of most value to your team right now? Is what you're doing of value? Because a lot what's come out of this is that there's a lot of wasted energy and time and effort on things that actually are of no value whatsoever. So at worst, you're going to save yourself some time. So please, um, again, um, the, the, it's a completely free, no obligation capability. Um, Steve will share a link um, uh, so you can all take the survey. Uh, our team are committed to supporting you. So if any of you have any questions, um, or, or in terms of what it delivers, then just get in touch with us. We'll help you. Steve will help you as well. Um, yeah, just give it a go. Uh, the, um, it'll not just give you the insights, but there's a success guide that supports it, which is full of lots and lots of insights, which we've pulled together from all the interviews we've done with clients. Um, so I'm sure there'll be at least one, if not many dozen um, uh, golden nuggets in there for each of you. Fantastic. Steve, on that note, that's been a real uh use this afternoon um let's hope we get uh, uh you know if this offers even if it's just the, uh, the, the, the you know the topics we've chatted about and some of the ideas fantastic but again i join with you in saying that you jump on uh to you, you know do the survey um you'll be glad you did uh the information you're going to get from your team good or bad uh is going to help you come out of this stronger than when, when we entered six weeks ago so thanks a lot
Thank you, Steve.